The first question that we have is how do I bring forward an idea for an opportunity-based activity? How, how are mics looking, guys? Try that. We've got three mics here. The one that he's got's not working. How many PhDs oh, does go. it get to get a microphone working? Oh, just one, okay. Um, that's a great question, because what that does is it opens up um, my opportunity to talk about the opportunity-based component of iFi, which I didn't mention, actually, when I introduced iFi. So we do have a small amount of funding in that space, um, which will be used for sort of low-hanging fruit, where we think we can uh, put a bit of investment and, and create some impact um, through our knowledge. Um, how do we go about offering up those ideas? I'm not sure we've quite gotten to that process just yet, the exact process, um, but we do see that being driven largely through the challenge leadership team and through the strands as well, and our existing researchers um, at the moment through through our challenge community, simply communicating those communities, uh, those opportunities up through the theme leaders, such as Conrad, um, and these guys as well is, is, is probably the best mechanism is communicating with those individuals. In terms of EBM, is there a risk that managers and decision makers will predominantly choose to use outputs tools merely as information inputs rather than fundamentally changing how they do management? And if so, how can this be mitigated? That is a really good question, and I think if I had an answer to that, we wouldn't be here at this conference. Um, I, you know, I, I'm really against just um, plugging things in and using the answers. Um, I think, um, as we've emphasised multiple times at this conference, EBM is a journey, and it's about relationships and trust and getting the right people around the table to make decisions. So I, these, I see these tools as... as a way of helping and summarising information. I'd hate to them to be used in a vacuum, uh, and often um, decisions are made in a vacuum, and often people are taking and believing outputs of models and tools without understanding the assumptions, without understanding the uncertainties, and that without bringing multiple knowledge systems to the table in which to base these decisions. So it would be my biggest fear, and totally against the principles of EBM, if the tools that we were using were the only Thing in the box that we were using. So I hope today, I hope the three days is emphasised across the three days that there are multiple tools in the box, there are multiple ways of doing, and we've got to embrace that complexity and diversity to get the best outcomes. I don't know if that's answered the question, sorry, but just some random thoughts. Any further comments on that? Inevitably, I suppose, there are, we just don't want to have the same old, same old happening. Eh? Just shifting deck chairs. Hey, look, uh, Jeff Roy's asked, uh, there, are th there will be three tiers of priorities identified from Te Ara Pairangi Future Pathways. How should we go about ensuring that the ocean features in Tier 1? Just my quick answer would be making our work and our story as visible and very front of face as possible. So that's very much about making everyone see us and what we have to say. I don't know, that's my quick response. And I, I would add to that, that we've got such a diverse sort of um, kete from which to draw to, um, to elevate our research. So I think that's a strength in terms of if we are to get to that top tier, I don't know, get the ocean to the top tier. So it's not just ecological science that we've produced, it's not just things that are divorced from, you know, everything's so interconnected. And um, yeah, you go to. Yeah, I think we, um, we've heard that um, our researchers um, come from all walks of life in the challenge and I think we have a, a fabulous opportunity to support the people that we've actually been doing research for and with um, to to leverage their voice, um, so that's not just a, a science challenge voice, but it's a, it's a voice informed maybe by the science challenge or given voice by the science challenge, but actually needs to reflect um, the multiple voices involved in, in the work that we've been doing. Um, yeah, and I would I would hope that we 
would be looking quite proactively to support that in any opportunity we get. I'm waiting for you to give me the... Great. In the absence of uh, the EBM being explicitly in law, will agencies move fast enough to evolve? <laughs> I'm looking at Liz now and Eric. Um, I'm going to say they might need some help with that, and that's what we would hope to do. And Because um, I do think there's a lot of, we have got a lot of research. I think something that keeps coming out from the, the challenge research and what we've heard over the last few days is sort of a recognition of the need to move, maybe even a desire to, to move, but not knowing how. So maybe if we can, I think there's research that we've done that shows some of the how to move that might make it a bit more palatable and um, a bit easier. Liz is nodding, so I think she's happy with what I'm saying there. But that's what I think we need to be taking from um, in this part of the research. We've got so much information and um, we've learned so much, and, but it's not necessarily easily accessible or easily palatable. So if we can make it palatable, that, that aspiration could actually be put into action. Um, I, I think one of the, the hugest things the challenge has generated is, is not necessarily the pieces of paper um, that we've seen, but it's the relationships that have been built. And the challenge has acted as a, a, a space that multiple different agencies and players can come together. Um, you know, we have representatives from, from people with the blue economy, we have central regional governments, we have Hapu and Fano, and, it's just, and, and those relationships that have been built over the last eight and a half years are our greatest asset and our greatest resource. And I think if we can leverage off those relationships at those multiple levels, that could be a trigger for change. Um, some of the work that we've done in the challenge and the tipping points project in phase one uh, demonstrated quite clearly the disconnect in management agencies and the poor env environmental outcomes of delaying decisions. But, you know, there's a slow moving freight train heading towards us in climate change. And, you know, if we can't get it right in New Zealand with these six degrees of free uh, separation or even less, um, and a relatively flat government structure, we should be able to affect change. And I think the relationships that we've built are a good, um, a good driver of that and a good resource to, to fall back on. Yeah, and I guess I'd just add to that, having worked in policy over in the States, where it's far, far more bureaucratic than here in small New Zealand, um, that policy is always you know, five to 10 years behind the science and the knowledge. It, it moves very slowly. But we're already seeing action and impact from the challenge by working through communities. And I think, you know, Ohiwa Harbor is a really special story of us implementing, integrating everything in a very good example. Community, you know, think globally, act locally, all those things. But I do think that that's a great place to, to start. And there's, you don't need legislation to keep us from starting to behave differently. It's good to see investors uh, in IFI1. Lawyers, accountants, insurers, bankers, etc., are important audiences that need upskilling. Will the challenge engage these professional services to uptake outputs slash build their capability? This is kind of a Nick question. With yeah. It. Yeah, come on, Nick. Come on, join us. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. One of the what, one of the things I, I think that's been a bit novel about this, uh, the way we've approached uh, blue economy. I could sit behind here if you like. No. no um, <laughs> You're officially on the beach. Ah, great. This must be the 60th minute or something. Um, we, I, th I think what, what we've set out to do explicitly uh, with the Blue Economy Research is to bring, in their, uh, bring insurance companies, investors, uh, uh, green investors, uh, bankers, and, and make finance part of the conversation. And what's really important about that is that a lot of the international and now national regulatory uh, arrangements that are beginning to bite 
into how it is that we perform in uh, environmental spaces. Those, those things are driven through finance and through um, nature, well, climate-based disclosure agreements and uh, task force for nature-based um, disclosures that is uh, gaining traction internationally. So a lot, of the, a lot of the movement is going to come through finance. And what we've yet to do, um, no, I, I, I take that back. We, we have the Restorative Economies Project, which has actually been in, had in the room ecologists, uh, bankers, uh, investment fund directors, uh, having conversations about natural capital in a very narrow kind of way, and much more generally about the, the conditions that are necessary to bring ecological insights to bear on investment questions, what kinds of return structures need to shift. And we're doing that kind of work also in the Indigenizing uh, Blue Economies Project, where we're talking with Māori entities about those kinds of return factors and how you bring ecological questions into calculating returns. So, yes. I'm going to just chuck a, just a bit of an add-on to that. Is it, a little, is it more about uh, dangling carrots or is it more about whacking them with a stick? Uh -huh. Well, anyone who was here to see the panel discussion on, on Wednesday afternoon would, would know that it, it's both. <laughs> and one of the things that I think we should have, we in the blue economy space should take away from this conference is much more, largely from you, Pai, the, but we, we need to uh, responsibilise government a little bit more in this process. So we should have a few more sticks at our disposal. Uh, well, we're not going to hit anyone with a stick, but uh, someone else should be hitting some people with sticks. But at the same time... God, <laughs> we're not promoting so violence to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, we, we shouldn't ignore the importance of the carrots. And I, I think that's, that, that, that sort of mix of carrot and stick is, is what we're hoping to build into some of the work that Jody is going to do in the next phase uh, through the Moana Nui uh, connection where we will be working with businesses thinking about carrots and sticks as they, as they develop. I do think this is a real opportunity space for um, the research that we've done in the challenge in terms of, um, I, I don't know that, that's in terms of thinking about that much more closely that relationship between the law and policy and the blue economy investment space. So I think that's something that's quite, a, that is, is very exciting that could come through the, um, this particular, or IFI1, the, the law and policy thing, and has connections to one of the other priority topics as well. So if I've got an idea, you know, that's sort of outside of the eight topics um, already proposed, how, how do I propose an additional topic? Hmm. Um, you don't. I think no. Well, I think we're, you know, this is, we're sort of building it as we fly, kind of thing, and we need to land it. But I think, um, heck, we we don't have all the answers. It, it's it's essentially a synthesis exercise across the entire research community and our stakeholders and EWE partners. So I think um, if you do have a topic that we may have missed, hopefully you've added it to the post-its downstairs. We had a space for that. Um, I'd encourage you to do that before you leave. And if you don't, can't manage to do that, um, please, please um, get in touch with me directly. That's all I can say. Reach out, please, so I know who you are. How do we, can we, create and resource hundreds of Ohiwa-type bright lights initiatives simultaneously, simultaneously across Aotearoa and sustain that. Not every place has a kura. My answer was going to be clone kura. Um, um, I, I think um, what kura and her whanau and research partners have shown us is that there's a way, um, and getting out there and doing is the way, and, and working through obstacles with people. And I think one of the synthesis, or one of the activities we're going to be doing in, in this part of the the challenge is to try and, if it's possible, to generalise the learnings from Ohiwa, is to provide that back to the community. So at least there's a, a look at what the enabling factors are for the success and also potentially how to solve some of the, the bottlenecks. Um, but if there's a willingness there and there's a champion on the ground there, 
and a willingness in the community and, and also the, a willingness at the regional council level, um, you know, Ohiwa shows what can be achieved. Last question. How would you each phrase the key science questions we need to address over the next five to ten years, say as tier two priority of Te Ara Paerangi Future Pathway? I'll start with one. Um, I think um, just, and again, this is not a challenge hat thing, this is just me personally. I think, again, understanding the cumulative effects is, is really central to this. There's still a lot of science we don't know. I think um, the other thing that we're decades behind on in our marine communities and, is restoration and, and restoration initiatives. I can look on the Waikato Regional Council website and download a nice glossy A4 telling me how to restore my gully what trees I need to plant where, and at what stage I need to do that, and what the expectations of recovery might be, and the benefits of doing it in my gully, because it connects up lo lots of other gullies. Um, I don't see any documents like that I can download from any website anywhere, telling how community groups, how individuals can get engaged in that. And partly that's a science question, and partly that's a lack of investment question. So I think, um, you know, if we want restorative, regenerative economies, which we all agree is a, is a key aim, then part of it is how do we do this and engaging with whānau and people who have observed and have ideas and collecting that knowledge and driving that forward. That's a key science question for me. Um, and also, of course, how these systems respond to climate change. Do we, do we each have to answer that? It did say each of us. Um, Wow, I'd have to really think about that one, but I, I come back to restorative economies and restoration, which you do see overseas. Again, almost 30 years ago, I was working in restoration ecology where it's an entire industry overseas in some places because of the way it's written into legislation. And I think over here, um, I don't know, I suppose some, some science questions there around how, and again, it's an integrated thing with socio-ecological questions in there as well as socio-economic around how do we actually start reversing degradation but embed it so that it's actually part of, you know, that investment, impact investment, for instance, which we have challenges around, how do we actually demonstrate the value in restoring um, ecosystems um, beyond just, yeah, I'm not framing that at all. Um, that's not very well spoken, but um, it, it would be in the restoration space. As a social scientist, um, not a scientist, mine would be something around governance, but I can't quite get my head around it. Something around what does Māori governance look like? And um, so just thinking about some of the things that um, Rob said this morning um, around co-governance. And so it's, um, I'm, I guess I'm sort of thinking about what, are the, what does it look like? And how can Māori be empowered? Um, you know, those tricky conversations around sovereignty or the tricky sort of constitutional dimensions around those sorts of things. So it's much bigger than um, thinking about like um, the cumulative, well, the cumulative effects is huge, but much bigger than thinking about a marine space. But um, I think that's where my passion lies is in, in that sort of, that's, but I, you know, I don't have a clear question, but that's what I would be thinking. Yeah. It's the elephant in the room. I guess my mind builds on that, um, and I, I would be very disappointed if there wasn't a tier one, let alone tier two, focus on um, providing the space for indigenous-led um, research and uh, across the board and marine and the marine and our connection to the moana um, from governance right through. So. Um, I, I would definitely hope that some of the outputs coming out of the challenge would inform um, at least the tier two priority around that. But um, yeah, I would be disappointed if there if there wasn't something of that nature in the mix. Well, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, I, for me, in a sense, the most important question, and it's less a science question, like Karen, I'm a social scientist. Uh, the most important question for me was posed yesterday by Lisa Tehuhu, 
when she talked about the deep dive into Te Ohu Kai Moana's uh, work. And I, the question for me then is, how do you connect that deep dive to what we heard yesterday afternoon? And I, I think the, the work that uh, Kane and Sean and uh, the other Tangaroa projects have been do doing, how do you connect um, Kura to uh, the deep dive into Te Ohu's work? And I think that would be a fantastic science question. I'm not sure whether it's tier one, tier two. Uh, I know I'm not the person to answer the question, but <laughs> that would be it for me. Well, look, on behalf of uh, everyone gathered here, thank you all for your, uh, your time on stage. I, I think this has been a really good uh, panel session. People have had the opportunity to ask their questions. Kia ora koutou. Bear with me, everyone. We're just waiting for the uh, the screen um, to uh, to load up. Conrad, thanks for um, carrying on. I know that we had a bit of a glitch over there, and uh, it is the it's the sign of a of a very gifted rugby player when you have the ability to play what's in front of you and and do it impromptuly like you did. I was I was very impressed. You will be in my my starting fifteen.